Welcome to today's video, Bible Verses About Guiding. Psalm 32 verse 8 I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go, I will guide thee with mine eye. This verse reflects God's personal commitment to instruct and teach. When it says, I will guide thee with mine eye, it implies an intimate level of guidance, akin to nonverbal cues given by a parent to a child, where a mere look is enough to convey volumes. The guidance here is personal, direct, and tailored to the individual's needs. It speaks of a journey that you do not undertake alone but are accompanied on by divine instruction, leading you on a path of righteousness and blessing. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. These verses emphasize the importance of complete trust in the Lord and warn against relying solely on human understanding. When we acknowledge God in all our ways, which means considering his desires in every decision we make, he promises to direct our paths. This direction is not just about making the right choices but walking in the fullness of his perfect plan for our lives, which is often beyond our comprehension but always for our good. Psalm 25 verse 9 the meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. Here, the emphasis is on the character trait of meekness. Meekness is not weakness, it is power under control, a willingness to submit and work under authority. It's the acknowledgement of one's limitations and the openness to learn and grow. Those who embody meekness position themselves to be guided by God in making the right judgments and decisions. They are teachable willing to learn God's ways and walk in them, which leads to a life of fulfillment and righteousness. John 16 verse 13 Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. This verse speaks of the role of the Holy Spirit in guiding believers into all truth. The Spirit doesn't speak independently but speaks what he hears from the Father and the Son, ensuring that believers are in alignment with God's will. He also reveals things to come, preparing believers for the future and enabling them to live in readiness and victory. The Holy Spirit, therefore, is a guide that doesn't just lead on current paths but also unveils the paths ahead. Psalm 48 verse 14 For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. This verse underscores the eternal nature of God's guidance. Unlike human guides who may leave or pass away, God is a guide unto death and beyond. He is committed to leading us through every phase of our lives, and His guidance doesn't end at the grave. It extends into eternity, emphasizing the eternal presence and unending faithfulness of God in the life of a believer. No matter the phase or the challenge, God's guidance is a constant we can rely on. Isaiah 58 verse 11 And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. The continuous guidance of the Lord as mentioned in this verse comes with multiple promises, satisfaction during times of drought strength and weakness, and a flourishing existence. This guidance is not sporadic but continuous, providing believers with a resilience akin to a spring whose waters never fail. Regardless of external circumstances, the guided believer remains vibrant and vitalized, a testament to the life-giving power of divine guidance. James 1 verse 5 If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. This verse presents a practical step for those seeking guidance. Ask. It highlights God's readiness to give wisdom generously to those who seek him for it. The term, upbraideth not, means that God does not scold or reprimand us for our ignorance or past mistakes. Rather, he is more interested in our coming to him for guidance. Hence, divine guidance is accessible through prayer, and it is not given sparingly but liberally, indicating the boundless wisdom available to us in God. 
Psalm 73 verse 24. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Here, the psalmist recognizes the twofold aspect of God's guidance. Firstly, there is guidance through life with God's counsel. God's counsel involves his word, his teachings, and the insights he provides through the Holy Spirit. It's comprehensive guidance that covers every aspect of life. Secondly, there's the promise of being received into glory, which speaks of the eternal reward awaiting those who follow God's guidance on earth. Thus, divine guidance has both temporal and eternal benefits. Isaiah 42 verse 16 And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them, and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them, and not forsake them. This verse beautifully illustrates how God's guidance can transform our journey. It speaks to those who feel blind about their future or direction. God promises to lead in unfamiliar paths, to illuminate darkness, and to straighten what is crooked, indicating a transformative guidance that overcomes obstacles and clarifies confusion. Importantly, it ends with the promise of His unfailing presence, ensuring us that His guidance also means His companionship. Proverbs 16 verse 9 A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. The contrast in this verse points out that while humans can make plans, it is God who oversees the steps taken. This doesn't negate the responsibility to plan but rather reassures us that God's sovereign guidance will direct us. The steps imply day-to-day -day decisions and actions, the minutiae of life. So, while we have the free will to devise our way, success and righteousness come from submitting our plans to God's overarching guidance. John 8 verse 12 Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jesus' declaration of being the light of the world establishes him as the ultimate guide. To walk in darkness is to live without direction, clarity, or understanding. But following Jesus, the light, removes darkness, providing guidance that leads to abundant life. This light of life is not just about knowing where to go, but having the life energy and divine enablement to thrive on the path Jesus illuminates for us. Psalm 23 verse 3 He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The leading of God here is specifically in the paths of righteousness, meaning that God's guidance is always in the direction of ethical living, justice, and goodness. This is not just for our benefit, but also for his name's sake. God guides us into righteousness to reflect his character through us. When we walk in his guided paths, we honor his name and showcase his nature to those around us. Proverbs 11 verse 3 The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. In this verse, guidance is linked to personal integrity. It suggests that a person's moral compass can serve as guidance, steering them away from decisions that could lead to destruction. For the upright, their integrity keeps them on a path that aligns with God's will showing that divine guidance also works in conjunction with our choices and character. However, for transgressors, their perverseness or moral corruption becomes a path to destruction. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, and not of evil, to give you an expected end. God's guidance is grounded in his plans for us, plans that are for our welfare and not for harm to give us a future filled with hope. Knowing that his thoughts toward us are of peace and not of evil should inspire confidence and trust in his guidance. It reassures us that following his lead will not take us to a place of harm but rather to the fulfillment of our divine destiny. Psalm 31 verse 3 For thou art my rock and my fortress, therefore for thy name's sake lead me and guide me. The psalmist's plea for guidance is based on the recognition of God as a rock and fortress. God's guidance is sought not just for personal safety or success but for the sake of God's name. 
It signifies that God's guidance is consistent with his nature, solid, protective, and reliable. When God guides, he does so in alignment with his character, leading us into his purposes that reflect his glory and strength. Isaiah 30 verse 21 And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left. This verse portrays guidance as a voice saying, This is the way, walk in it. It's a picture of God's gentle direction, helping us navigate choices. The specifics, when ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left, indicate that God's guidance isn't generic. It's specific and personal, applicable to the minute decisions we make daily. God cares deeply about the details of our lives and provides guidance that addresses our specific situations and choices. Romans 8 verse 14 For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Being led by the Spirit of God is an identifying characteristic of God's children. This guidance involves an ongoing, personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. It's dynamic, responsive, and interactive. The children of God have the privilege of divine guidance that shapes their decisions, actions, and ultimately, their destinies. This leading is continuous and encompasses all aspects of life, affirming both our identity and the relationship we have with God. 2 Timothy 3 verses 16 to 17 All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. These verses affirm the role of Scripture in divine guidance. The Bible, inspired by God, is beneficial for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. It is the standard and source of divine guidance, equipping us for every good work. So, when we seek God's guidance, we must look to His Word, allowing it to shape our thoughts, correct our paths, and equip us for the journey of faith. As we embrace these verses and the profound assurances they provide, let's remember to subscribe, like, share, and comment to keep this channel thriving and these messages spreading far and wide. May the peace of God guide your hearts and minds, and may His Word light your path now and always. Blessings to you all!